Now, a man named Ananias, together with his wife, Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to men, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then the young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? Look. The feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in, and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. During the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked with a guard standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest were puzzled, wondering what would come of this. Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts, teaching the people. 
At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Theodos appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. All right, good afternoon and good evening to everybody, and welcome back to Acts uh, chapter 5, where we left off um, yesterday was at the end of chapter 4, we found out that we were introduced to Barnabas, who had just sold some of his uh, property and gave it to, uh, and put it at the disciples' feet, and now we get sort of the juxtaposition of that where we get uh, uh, Ananias and Sapphira who do the same thing, but hold back money, but yet lie about it. And, and so um, Gary, as, as one of the things I just, I'll, I'll point out, and then I'll let you sort of talk through it is, you know, it, it seems like when we look at verse three, that Peter recognizes in Ananias's heart that he was filled with Satan. Uh, to lie to the Holy Spirit. Um, what, uh, how do you take that? I mean, how, you know, um, what, what was the big deal, I guess, with Ananias and Sapphira holding back funds? 
uh, it seems like a temptation uh, and the, you know, uh, temptation of Christ uh, stories in the Gospels uh, talk about Satan being involved in those uh, temptations. And it, it seems like in this case, it's that they said, hey, we sold our property and here's all the money from it. And uh, that wasn't all the money from it. Uh, they were being deceptive about it, and they kept some back for themselves and lied about it. Yeah. And that just really uh, uh, brought on a, a radical response uh, from Peter and from uh, the Lord, uh, obviously. So it, it was, it's a powerful scene that really surprises you. Uh, as you're reading uh, the book of Acts and seeing where things are going. Yeah, because, I mean, really, the the big deal, you know, it was not that they held back money. The big deal was that they lied about it. So, I mean, if, yeah. they, if they sit here and said, here's a portion of, of, what, we, uh, of what we sold, mm -hmm. no big deal. But it was the lie. Uh, right, it, right. They could have said, hey, we... We sold the, the property and uh, uh, here's uh, a donation from that sale. Uh, you know, we, it, it's not the whole sale, but here it is, you know, and I, I'm not sure anything would have happened to him after that, but the lying about it. And the way it was described with uh, Barnabas and before uh, Barnabas was that they were laying it at the apostles' feet. So it's obviously like a, it's a public uh, kind of thing uh that's going on there and so if you're lying in the in the church service uh, and trying to you know get all that credit for what you did uh, and you're lying about it well it was looked on to uh well that's for sure well not i guess it, it that it's almost satan it says satan filled his heart so there there's something more going on there where uh this may not be a one-time thing either but uh, a choice this guy's continually made well and, and again in this scene not to not to like overburden it but uh, no, no. Uh, uh, it harkens back to jesus's teaching when he's at the temple and basically saying you know don't be like these hypocrites that mm -hmm. sit there and make a big deal about giving to the church be more like this yeah. the, the yeah. widow you know yeah, exactly. And the wife does it too. I mean, later in the story, she, she comes lies about it. Uh, so my guess is that it's, they were possibly habitual uh, about that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, before their Christian life, uh, and uh, here it comes up right there again, and uh, just a matter of course. So unfortunately. Yeah. Now, now, uh, you know, when, when we were talking before we started the recording, I said the one thing I didn't like about today's video was, you know, it, it's great that you have sort of Luke as the narrative. I mean, it's been wonderful to watch that uh, in this particular in this particular uh, rendition of, of the Book of Acts from a visual standpoint. But I sort of didn't like the fact that he's sitting on the boat talking this story through instead of seeing it because it's, it is a powerful moment in the church. So I did post the video of, of AD, the, the Bible continued. I was able to find the little cut of this scene, which um, I posted on Facebook. It's pretty powerful because, uh, I mean, uh, the wind comes, Peter sees the vision of them lying, and then boom, he goes right after him. And then uh, Anias's eyes start bleeding. I mean, they just start bleeding, and he dies there, and it's it's very very powerful uh, from from that. But out of that, we get this idea of the the church being um, where is that? It's in verse uh, eleven that a great uh, fear came over the whole church, and this is what this is the first time that that word church shows up in the book of acts i mean uh, what what do you think the meaning or is there any meaning for this showing up for the first time here well you know uh, i think before uh i'm not sure it's a grand meaning by luke but uh there's a there's a new identity 
for this group of people. And uh, uh, the, that new identity is being forged here uh, in this story. Uh, there's another a source that I looked up that said it's this, uh, this story of between four and five where the, the council is making decisions about these believers uh, uh, as to uh, what they can and can't do that uh, they're separating the church uh, or the, the, the believers of Jesus from the, you're getting the, the hostility starting there and it's separating those folks from the, the mainstream, quote unquote, uh, believers for the Jewish people. So uh, in that sense, using that term is probably appropriate right here because it's, uh, when, uh, I know the, in, it was chapter four yesterday, one of the verses is they returned them uh, Peter and John to their people, and that was the comment at that part is to their people. Well, I could have meant just their friends and the people they were staying with, but it it also inferred that it could be wider than that, that they're calling that sect or that uh, part of uh, the believers of the Messiah, that Jesus was Messiah, a, a people that was different, their people, not our people. So. Uh, that identity is growing as it's coming along. And then we're going to find out, uh, you know, uh, another five or so chapters from here uh, about or, or less uh, about uh, the term Christians and it being the first time they were called Christians. And he, he actually points that one out. So, well, and, and I don't want, I'd never want to over spiritualize or try to yank something out of the scripture that's not really there. So, this is just sort of an observation for me, and I, I and take it for what it's worth, is we get this um, idea of lying to the Holy Spirit being punished, you know, quite severely, and then all of a sudden, ekklosia, which is the Greek term, uh, shows up, and, and it's it seems very interesting that, you know, again, as believers, we are the church. The Holy Spirit that dwells in us is the church. And so that, that uh, again, it might be a bit of a reach to be sitting there going, ah, we see the Holy Spirit actually punishing, you know, and we get this fear mm -hmm. and reverence now, and now they're called the church. It's probably an overreach, uh, but it's just sort of one of those things that, at least in my own mind, I took away from it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know and, uh, yeah, verse 9 uh, Peter says to uh, Sapphira, uh, how could you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? So the spirit is involved with that, so, as opposed to the of Satan filling uh, their hearts. So uh, it, it's a valid uh, point, I think. Yeah. Um, now, you know, we get this scene. So, so uh, you know, we get this scene where they're... Uh, so, so let me... Let me stop there with that, what you said, too. Uh, I was thinking about it as you said it, the fear sees the whole church, and that word uh, ecclesia uh, means, basically, it's just a, another word for people assembled, mm -hmm. and uh, that's actually what the term synagogue uh, means, too, is uh, a, a group assembled or a meeting uh, for the Lord. So uh, this is a... a a kind of a synonymous term, but it's a term that I don't believe was used for the synagogue in the Greek. It's uh, it, so there's a, another term of assembling, but it's he's using the term that's going to get used in more the Gentile world uh, rather than the, the Jewish world. And that's kind of a trend for Luke is seeing that, uh, you know, the as it expands into the Gentile world, uh, using uh, less sometimes Jewish terms and more the Greek, uh, the Koine Greek terms for, for things. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree. And, and you know, we sort, of, uh, we sort of shift scenes here. Uh, so, you know, where this all happened uh, with Anais uh, and Sapphira, we don't really know. They were just together, but we, we sh uh, shift scenes and we're back preaching in the temple. And uh, the one thing I pulled out is in, uh, you know, we see in verse 12 that they're at Solomon's portico. And at verse 13, 
you know, this idea, and again, I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, which is going to be a little bit different than, than what they said in the NIV 84, I believe it is. Uh, but, but it says uh, in verse 13, but none of the rest dared to associate with them. However, the people held them in high esteem. So, uh, you know, first of all, they're back teaching right there, uh, right in the temple court area, uh, right if if you can imagine, you know, the big court area and then the temple itself, they're, you know, right in the front area of where they're going to go into the temple itself. So, uh, and they're, they're there preaching. And who are these rest, the none of the rest wanted to associate with them? And sort of what do you think the meaning behind that is? Um, yeah, the, it, it, to go to, on to the next verse, uh, there's, there's almost a, a contradiction going on there that uh, the believers, the believers were meeting together again in Solomon's colony. So they've been told not to do it, but they're still doing it. And uh, then no one else dared join them and, uh, uh, is the way the NIV said it or the way uh, they said it, which, which is interesting. They were meeting in public, very public ways. In this case, in the the house meetings, uh, the house church is less public, so uh, they might have felt okay about doing that because in verse fourteen it tells us, "Well, nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number." Well, there were more people coming to believe Jesus was Messiah and uh, giving their hearts to uh, the the Lord in that way, uh, you know, praying for the forgiveness of their sin, and yet. They weren't hanging out at the temple at, at Solomon's Colonnade, evidently, uh, just because of that public nature of it, knowing that the Sanhedrin had met and said, uh-uh, no, don't do this. And uh, so, uh, you know, that that's part of the, I think part of what's going on there is uh, there's those who are giving their lives to it, but the new ones who are coming along, uh, they're a little less uh, likely to be so public about it at the temple, but uh, willing to join nonetheless. And and they're not just preaching. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. not oh, just no. preaching. signs and wonders. Yeah, signs and wonders because you know, uh, you know, people would come by and they just they'd be on cots and pallets, they say, and they just wanted to get into Peter's shadow. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean that's so powerful. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well I mean to me it harkens back to the 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 sick woman who just wanted to touch Jesus's mm -hmm. uh, you know cloak as he walked by and, and this is, uh, we're going to see this throughout because the same thing happens to Paul. They just wanted his handkerchiefs, you know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, so the power is, is there, you know, so um, they're going about their business, they're healing people, they're teaching, their multitudes are growing in good old Baptist terms, they butts in the seats, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're, we're getting, you know, the, cr the, the crowds right. on Sunday morning are, are full and right. uh oh here here comes some folks <laughs> here comes as, some as i may have joked as a, yeah if i may have joked in an earlier one uh, i had a, a, a friend in my home church back in los angeles that uh, would always say uh it's the baptists who say wherever two or three thousand are gathered <laughs> there i am in the midst of them <laughs> there's, there's there's a lot of truth to that but uh you, you know they're doing all this, and all of a sudden, we get verse 17, um, you know, uh, but the high priest rose up along with his associates, yes. and, and it talks about this sect of the Sadduc Sadducees, and they were filled with je jealousy, and they laid hands on the apostles and put them in public jail. So talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, you already alluded to it. They, they, they said, stop doing this, and they didn't stop. They can't didn't stop. And, and there, there, is, there are consequences for that behavior at this point. And, and they knew it uh, because they prayed about it and uh, prayed for boldness. And they went off and, and lived that boldness. And sure enough, uh, the authorities, that same, it's the temple establishment, essentially, that uh, had uh, done Jesus in. And now we're uh, going after them uh, for uh, what they were up to, and uh, second second jail night they get to spend. Uh, and this one says the apostles, 
And uh, I was kind of disappointed in the film too, because they only had like five of them. And I was thinking when they said the apostles, it was like all 12 of them that, that were in there, but uh, who knows? It doesn't say all 12 apostles. It just says the apostles, but uh, it was just, the group was there and uh, they, they spent the night together in jail. Not the whole night though. I was going to say, they get a An visit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and who's that visitor? And what does he do? It's, a, it's an angel. <laughs> and uh, well, uh, the angel of the Lord opened the doors. I mean, they're, they're, they're out, uh, amazingly enough. Uh, and it, I, I did like the video in the sense that uh, they were pretty surprised. And they weren't sure they should go with this guy. You know, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> but uh, wow. Uh, Hallelujah. Well, it it's just one verse, really one sentence, and yeah, it's not you know. And, didn't and, go into detail. <laughs> no, it, it's like it's like the the most anticlimactic sort of you know. <laughs> oh, I created the earth uh, type <laughs> type oh, thing. Oh, by the way. <laughs> oh, by the way, by the night, an angel came, opened the door of the gates of the prisons, and they went out. You know, it's right. Like, right. This is the Jerusalem prison, you know, this is like the temple prison and they have, they do have night guards and, you know, what happened? But yeah, the Lord just prepared the way and got them out of their fast. And the, the main idea is the, the instructions, hey, go preach again in the temple and the daybreak, you know, first thing uh, when the, when the gates are open, you be there and be doing your thing. And sure enough, they're there. And uh, when they send the guards to get them for the, for the hearing again to give them a piece of their mind uh they're gone <laughs> well and, and it's you, uh, you know i i don't think we should uh underestimate this instruction line uh because shoot it's the it's the instruction jesus gave i mean you know yeah. they're there's they're they're the, the angels just sort of saying the same thing go stand and speak to the people in the temple and the whole message of this life it's like Hey guys, go and preach, and and, mm -hmm. and 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 they're they're pretty smart. They go, <laughs> they go and they preach, and you know the shock. You know, because the, the thing that amazes me is the shock and and all of the guards and explaining to the council of what's going on is is the next couple of verses. We take longer to explain that they're not in jail. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Then we do get the their job as a result of this. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Be a sign. Yeah, yeah, and you know, in the in in the you know the TV series that that uh, President Trump had, you know, you're like you're fired. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's gonna happen. I bet. Yeah. yeah. So 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 we get the and I and I I did love the video in this instance. I mean, you know. They're in the council, the the Sanhedrin is in session, and they're like, go get them and bring them in here. And then they come in and they're like, we don't know where they're at. <laughs> and then and then another guy goes, we found them. They're right outside preaching. <laughs> and so, yeah. so they, they haul them in and they start to question them again. And then Peter, you know, what does Peter tell him? I mean, he, he goes right after him. And what's the power there? Uh, uh, you know, what do you see as the power in in uh, Peter's message? The consistency of it. Uh, it. He says what he said to them in chapter four at the first uh, the first hearing, and it was, "Hey, we must obey God rather than you." The at the first hearing, he asked them the question, and he he let them answer it in their own own hearts and minds. Uh, and this time, he just out boom. Here's what's going on. And uh, you killed Jesus, God raised Jesus, and uh, we're talking about him. And uh, he's been exalted to the right hand of, as prince and savior. Boy, he, he didn't mince words. Talked about repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Uh, and we are witnesses. We, we witness this. So, and so is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit brought into it as well. Uh, so all the kind of the main ingredients of uh, almost a summary of what's gone on so far, uh, just reminding them if they had forgotten the whole story. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when, and what is they, what's their uh, reaction to it? Verse 33, they wanted to put him to death. 
They were furious. Yeah. It was like, hey, just like they did to Jesus, you guys, it's, you know, it's time. And uh, that's when uh, my, one of my favorite Bible characters pops up. And Well, and that... Uh, uh, and that's where I'm going to, uh, I'll probably just walk away. <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to set you up, walk away and, and probably go out for a little bit. But, uh, you know, we, I think the, the great thing uh, about the Bible is these, you know, these aren't characters. These are real people. And uh, these people of the Bible, you know, every, every one of us has sort of those favorite people. And I know um, Gamaliel is one of your favorites, uh, you know, from the Bible. And, and he stands up and he gives this counsel. So why don't you just unload every bit of knowledge you have? <laughs> about, about, you, you, well, I'm not going to, not everything. <laughs> but uh, it, it is interesting. This guy stands up to talk and uh, everybody pays attention and it was uh if you knew if you were somebody alive then and knew who this guy was and knew what was going on uh you would have paid attention uh and i'll, I'll just kind of run through because if you read both in the jewish uh history annals as well as in christian history annals uh he was considered one of the one of the the most important people uh, of this time. Uh, uh, he's been called, he was the grandson. First of all, he had the right stuff. He was the grandson of a rabbi named Hillel who had lived up until uh, around uh, 20 BC, uh, E himself, uh, before the common era, or, or BC, as they uh, call it for us Christians. And uh, uh, he, so he was in a family that uh, had, was known for one of the two major uh, parties, if you will, or factions within the Pharisees. Uh, it was Hillel and a guy named, another rabbi named Shammai, were kind of the two founders of the that modern day uh, group that would be called the Pharisees by the Christian scripture. And uh, so Hillel at the time, as he was, uh, he kind of inherited what he had, but he lived into it too. There's a saying about him that probably says it all, uh, and uh, the saying is, uh, since Rabban Gamaliel, the elder, died, purity and piety died out at the same time. Uh, it, it was like when he died, uh, the, real, the real faith and the reverence for Torah uh, uh, died out with him. And uh, so he was highly revered uh, when he stood up at that Sanhedrin meeting. He had been uh, uh, president. Uh, of the Sanhedrin at times. So here's a, a past president, but still somebody there, uh, possibly. And uh, uh, he uh, speaks to that group. And when he speaks, people listen. Uh, now, what's interesting is in the Mishnah, most of his teaching, uh, or well, we don't know what's missing, because there's very little of his teaching in the in the Mishnah, which is really unusual. This is a rabbi teachings from those first centuries of the the um, uh, you know the new era. Uh, the, there's almost nothing by Gamaliel, and uh, the deal was after he died, uh, evidently the the rival uh, party in the Pharisees took over, and they either just failed to collect his his teachings and writings, or they got rid of them, uh, took them out of the literature. So, uh, they, and they don't know what, which for sure, but uh, his teachings are not there, whereas all the other rabbis of that era uh, have uh, lots of teaching. For his status, you'd think he'd have more. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, anything, there's also Christian tradition that uh, he embraced Christianity. Uh, we don't know if at this point he was already a believer or not. There's tradition that, uh, you know, he, uh, this speech was part of that, uh, that uh, faithfulness, though he decided to be quiet about it, because he could still work with the Sanhedrin and do things like he did here and advocate for the people who believe Jesus was Messiah and make sure that they were protected. So it, it that's one of those things that uh, is, uh, 
there's some tradition about that and information that goes back uh, to the early centuries, but uh, that that's not totally known. But what we know from scripture is what happens here. And he tells them, hey, basically, if this is from God, there's no way you're going to stop it. In fact, you're going to be standing in God's way, and you'll be sorry. Uh, and if uh, it uh, is not a uh, God, well, don't need to worry about it. It's going to fizzle out, just like all the other things that come and go. Now, uh, there's there's two things. Um, uh, you know, one of my favorite characters is, uh, uh, in is, is Nicodemus. And you were telling me, so one thing I have to mention is, we have a lot of fun uh, putting this stuff together and because we're just enjoying digging into the scripture. Gary last night was texting me about a couple of things and he's and, and I'm sitting there looking up a couple of things. And the one thing that I did not know was that, uh, again, tradition, Christian tradition has uh, him and Nicodemus and I believe somebody else being baptized by Peter and John. And That's right. Talking, His own son, actually, uh, uh, Gamaliel's own son, plus Nicodemus. Here's two people that we know of from Scripture that were uh, a part of the council, part of uh, the resistance, if you will, uh, at the time to doing uh, these people in that uh, uh, are tied to being believers. And Peter and John, these exact uh, these guys, guys who came up in chapter four, yeah, having yeah. baptized them, oh. uh, and and then all there's, together, it's yeah. a, quite a story. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And there, there's um, and two other things. Um, you know, one is, you know, his counsel really stopped the pursuit of the Sanhedrin over. Um, over these early dis, uh, the, uh, dis apostles, it, it took the, the pressure off of them a little bit. Um, I mean, I think that's correct. We, you know, we don't see this big uh, battle going on anymore against them. But then the second thing is, we know of one of his students. And uh, you pointed it out to me from the video. So I'm going to let you explain and, and tell them, tell the folks that are watching to go back and watch a certain thing that happened in the video. So why don't you tell them? Yeah. If you, yeah, go back and watch uh, uh, Gamaliel's speech again, because there's a certain point uh, where he says, you know, we really shouldn't do anything about it because, uh, you know, if it's of God, it'll prosper. And if it's not of God, well, no big deal. Uh, somebody uh, stands up and walks out right in front of Gamaliel there and walks out the door. And uh, they don't make a big deal of it, but they do show it. And uh, that ends up being the actor who's going to be playing Paul later on. And actually in chapter four, he had a word in the uh, meeting about what to do with John and Peter. And uh, here they show him uh, stomp out and leave because he just couldn't stomach what was going on with his his leader, Gamaliel, uh, later in the book. Uh, Paul will say, and well, I, and I should say he was Saul here in uh, chapter five as he stomped out, or Shaul in the, in the Hebrew, and he was Paul or Paul uh, the, uh, later on, and he'll say, I was a student of Gamaliel. He was at the school of Gamaliel, these two different schools. I mean, they were t literally schools for rabbis. Yeah. And uh, he was at G Gamaliel's feet, uh, uh, learning from him. And uh, at that point, he walked out and it's very possible he would have gone to that other group uh, with Shammai, as I mentioned earlier, the, the other faction in the Pharisees, and they were much more legalistic, much more strict, and they would have cooperated with uh, the Sadducees in taking care of these guys and getting them, uh, cooperating with the high priests to, uh, uh, you know, get rid of them. Uh, and probably is what happens later with uh, where Paul gets the authority to start uh, going after them. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's amazing, all these little nuggets mm -hmm. that are sitting there. And um, you know, we, we go through this and basically they, the, the council listens to him. I mean, that's how much respect that he had. They, they listened to him and now these apostles are flogged. 
all right? And um, Log, but freed. Yeah, yeah, they're free, but they 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 don't go unscathed free. They get yeah. flogged. So so talk a little bit about the flogging. Mm. Uh, if you want to cross reference in the Old Testament in the in the Torah, Deuteronomy twenty five verses two through three talk about uh, when somebody goes against the authorities and uh, can be flogged. Uh, there's uh, no minimum, but there there's a maximum, and the maximum amount is uh, 40 lashes. And it says that uh, they should be uh, given the flogging according to the severity of their offense. And it doesn't tell us in this story how many uh, lashes they got, but uh, one's painful enough. <laughs> and uh, but the so that they are uh, they they do get uh, that punishment. The hostility ratchets up, uh, ratchets up uh, another notch, uh, so that there is. Uh, there's a, you know, there's um, what would you call punishment for, there's consequences for their behavior. They didn't do what the council had said first, and they're telling them again, don't do it. Uh, but there's no, uh, you know, strings attached, no punishment promised, but at least, hey, you got punished this time. It, it could get worse, uh, putting in their head, and, but they, they are allowed to go. But they, they're allowed to go, they get flogged, but their reaction to getting beat, <laughs> yeah. all right? I mean, because I mean, right away. Uh, their 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 reaction to getting beating is not normal. Uh, it's not normal. <laughs> yeah. and, and and what does it say there in verse forty one? Uh, and I'm I'm reading from the one they used in the video. The apostles left to the Sanhedrin rejoicing. So they're like as they're leaving, they're going. Praise God, <laughs> you know, hallelujah. Uh, and not because they got freed, but because they were counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name, for the name of Jesus. And uh, so there, it's like, wow, we got punished because we uh, believe in Jesus Christ and the rejoicing uh, in that. Uh, and that's, that's weird, uh, according to the rest of us you know, or the rest of them. Yeah, when we suffer, we're not usually going, thank you. <laughs> yeah, glory to God. Uh, and, and then it, it goes on to say, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop. So they got told to stop. They never stop. Yeah. It's, uh, they, it just empowered them even more. Yeah, and, and um, th this idea of being worthy in the name and then going out and preaching under the authority of the name, um, you know, we, we were talking earlier, uh, when, whenever you study the Bible, you can, I can, I don't know how many times I've gone through Acts, but when I'm studying something else, it, it comes in, you know what I mean? And uh, I was, we were talking today that um, I was catching up on the study of Daniel that Jer Dr. Jeremiah is going through, and uh, he was talking about basically when the Jewish scribes were at the time when they came back from the exile, were basically putting the Old Testament together. I mean, all these these scrolls were all there, but they're they're putting it all into one coherent, uh, you know, library. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when the scribes would come to the name of Yahweh, which is usually translated in our Bible, Lord, they would write that name once with their pen and then take the pen and get a new pen because wow. there was such reverence such fear of the name of the lord um that you know they they just cared for it that much so when we hear this that they went out preaching in the name and they and and they were worthy found worthy of suffering in the name that's a big deal to these Jews, uh, you know, it, it, in the first century. It, it's just amazing. Um, it's just amazing. I don't know if you want to add anything to my rambling <laughs> on the name. No. Uh, it, well, and then uh, I know uh, Jewish friends I had uh, in college who, when they would write uh, the word God, uh, even they would write G slash D, 
it was so uh, so honored and so hallowed, so holy that they weren't allowed to write even the whole name. Uh, and but it was a reminder to them of that holiness. And so, yeah, it, 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 it's a there's a whole study you could do. And the in the Hebrew and in the Hebrew manuscripts, they would not. Uh, use the term, and that's why in uh, our, you can see it in our own um, English translations often. In the Old Testament, the word Lord uh, is sometimes capitalized, all four letters, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That is when God's name is used, but they weren't allowed. To, it was so holy, besides throwing the pencil away, when they wrote uh, what they wrote in there, which was, uh, I believe it was Adonai, which was... Uh, uh, a the uh, substitute for it, uh, they uh, they couldn't write the actual letters that uh, were in the Hebrew, so they had to write a, a substitute uh, word because it was so holy uh, that they weren't even holy enough to write it. Yep. So uh, there's a whole tradition behind that, and you can see that in the Old Testament when you pick it up, and the word Lord is all caps. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, again, we're going on a little rabbit trail, but I mean, you know, Moses uh, is basically at the burning bush saying, how, how, how are they going to believe me that I'm supposed to go? And it's like, tell them I am, you know, and it's like, okay. So it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So we made it through. We made it through another chapter. Uh, and so, um, you know, the, the one thing uh, that I think when, as we're going through this and we're just seeing the early church and we're still in Jerusalem, um, is, is just uh, the amazing coming together of, of everything that's happening. I mean, we got a spy on the inside with, with uh, Gamaliel. You know, uh, we, we've got the first mention of the church. You know, we've got the setting up really of 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 the elders of the church i mean it's all it's all coming together and and coming together quickly and it's going to start going out <laughs> it's going to start going out uh you know not of its own accord sometimes which is which is lovely Absolutely. well well and and yet in the next chapter just to whet everybody's appetite it kind of goes back in because it becomes a, a conflict uh, it starts with a conflict within the group kind of the first uh church uh, conflict and they have to figure out how they're going to uh settle that it's a it's a proving ground you know they're, they're getting it all figured out so yep. as it grows as yep. an organization grows you have to adapt uh and uh we'll we'll see that tomorrow you know it'll be great well, with that, would you like to close us in prayer? Sure. I was going to use a, a prayer from the prayer Bible again, uh, from uh, Elmer Towns and Roy uh, Zook. And uh, it's just a simple prayer. Uh, so let us pray. Lord, thank you for the courage and boldness of the early church. May I and we always live for you with that same level of courage. Thank you for using the early church to reach people for Jesus. So use us as witnesses in the lives of lost people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be bold. <laughs> Be bold. And let us know that you're actually out there. Uh, comment, you know, do whatever. Share it with a friend uh, just so that we know that we're not that it matters if we we're just talking to ourselves, but it's nice if somebody else is out there too. So we'll yeah. see you tomorrow. Take care. God bless.